Hello, I am Michael Collins and this is Media Focus. In this video, we are going to be looking at one very, very particular double-page spread in the countercultural niche magazine, Adbusters. And the title for this double-page spread doesn't really have one, so I'm going to call it Red Souls Are Always in Season. Now, one thing... I always point out at the start of these videos is that it's very, very important not just to go on and on and on about the entire magazine when you're talking about it in an exam or in an assessment. It's the same for the TV shows, it's the same for the adverts, it's the same for anything that we studied in media studies. You need to make sure that you're talking about specific examples. And how many examples should you talk about? Well, it really depends on the question. But no more than two or three, I would say, per media product that you're studying. Okay, I think other teachers might disagree with me there, but I think any more than you'll be spreading yourself a bit thin and any less than you'll be doing whatever the opposite of spreading yourself thin is. I don't know. So, first of all, Adbusters is a completely different kind of magazine to Woman Magazine, which is the other magazine that you'll be studying if you are studying Adbusters for the EDUCAS A-Level Media Studies exam. It's totally different. And it's not just different from Woman Magazine. Adbusters is very, very self-consciously different from almost every other magazine that you can commercially buy on the newsstand. So in order to kind of help us out a little bit, in this video, we're going to narrow stuff down by looking at two questions in particular. The first one is, in what ways does Adbusters construct its target audience? Now, audience construction is absolutely essential to media studies. Woman Magazine constructs its target audience. Woman Magazine basically tells its audience, look, you are basic, you are straightforward, you are a conventional woman. You cook, you clean, you've got kids and a husband, which is why you should buy Woman Magazine. Look at it. It's you. It's you all over. Buy me. Now that is construction. That is constructing an audience. If you tell your audience that they are something, then that builds up an audience. And that's the answer to the question, why is Woman Magazine so basic? Well, it's to make money. Adbusters, on the other hand, does things completely differently. Adbusters is not a basic magazine with a straightforward message. It's a complex magazine with a complex and highly polysemic message. But it also constructs its target audience. Now, what is the target audience for Adbusters? That's a tricky one. And if I was going to sum it up in one word, it would be activists which is nowhere near as neat and tidy as Woman Magazine's, you know, middle-aged, heterosexual, white, working-class women, right? Which is obviously very, very specific. Activists, like, whoa, what does that mean? Like, people who go to protests, you know, maybe. People who have a social conscience, yeah. People who are involved in politics and change in the world, yeah, yeah, quite possibly. So Adbusters is trying to build up an activist audience. Woman Magazine is very, very much saying, look, here's what you are. Let's just keep the world the same way as it is. But Adbusters is like, well, let's change the world. You're going to go out. You're going to change the world after reading Adbusters. Maybe you have done already. The second key question we're going to keep in our heads as we go through this is how does Adbusters use subversive representations to position its audiences? Now, conventional representations are representations which are stereotypical, which tick the boxes. So a conventional representation of a woman in 1964 would involve her standing behind the sink in the kitchen or putting on makeup or, you know, naked in the bath. Um rubbing soap over herself. And these are all three representations that we see in Woman magazine, all very, very stereotypical. Adbusters, on the other hand, subverts these representations. 
Adbusters does not tick the boxes when it comes to representations of gender, when it comes to representations of ethnicity, you name it, Adbusters is breaking the rules. And arguably it does so to position its audiences in an uncomfortable and uncompromising mode of address. Now, audience positioning is where we are placed by a media product. Where are we? Are we nearby or are we far away? Who do we like? Who do we dislike? Who's the goody? Who's the baddie? Who do we find attractive? Who do we find ugly? Right? All this is achieved through audience positioning. Where are we? And do we like being there? So we're going to look at some examples of this. So don't worry. However, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, I don't really know what positioning is, please, 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 for the love of whatever, go back, look at your notes, find the video, anyone's video, watch it, get bang up to date on what positioning is because it is essential. You know, there could be a question on positioning in the exam. Not knowing a term like positioning is, quite frankly, a very, very quick and easy way to fail media studies. Sorry to be frank. Let's recap. Adbusters takes an unconventional approach to magazines. Adbusters is not a conventional magazine. And as we have learnt from the start of the course, the sole purpose of any media product is to make money. This is fundamental to every specialised industry that we've looked at. And every media industry has specialised means by which to ensure financial success. So if we think about the film industry, for example, films are made in a very, very specific way to make money. They are made, they might seem extremely expensive, but they're made in warehouses in Hollywood using the same stars as who were profitable last time and the same digital techniques in order to make films as quickly and efficiently as possible and the same composers who make soundtracks in exactly the same way to tickle the audience in such a way that they get loads and loads of money. Films are then first distributed to cinemas where people can then pay a big wedge to go and see them just the once and then can then buy them on luxurious formats like Blu-ray disc or can simply wait to stream them off a streaming surface later on for the prices of a subscription. So this is what we call a specialised form of distribution. Okay, and magazines are different. Magazines are released and, you know, might be sold in news agents or supermarkets or something along those lines. They are usually weekly or monthly and they will cost exactly the same amount of money every time you go in. And the magazine will look similar every time. And they will usually have a model on the front who, usually a mid-shot, head and shoulder kind of mugshot kind of thing. They'll be looking at you and, you know, it'll be someone that maybe you'll recognise or maybe you don't. It really depends on the kind of magazine. But at the same time, we know a magazine when we see it, right? Adbusters is the total exception to this rule. Every other media product we've looked at is out to make money in the most cutthroat and effective way possible. But... Adbusters pretty much looks like it's out there to lose money. Adbusters, quite frankly, excuse my French, does not give a crap about making money. And it almost seems like it wants to go out of business at times. The set edition that we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at a double page spread in just a minute, we see the magazine deliberately challenging this idea of a for-profit capitalist ideology. And it deliberately avoids providing any kind of anchorage by which to make the target audience feel more comfortable. Now, anchorage, and if you're not totally comfortable with this term again, you need to look it up. But anchorage is where meaning is weighed down by a media product. And in a magazine, this is most often done through the use of headlines or captions on images which basically tell you what's happening in the image and what you as the audience should be thinking. Adbusters doesn't really have any. Adbusters doesn't really tell you what to think which means that it's confusing and you're gonna have a lot of thoughts buzzing around your head as you look at this. Adbusters assumes that the target audience are educated, that they are well read that they know about various socio-political events which are going on around the world, but also that they know about luxury brands as well. 
which, you know, we need to talk about that in just a second. This magazine deliberately avoids providing any kind of anchorage to its target audience, if it even does have a target audience to begin with. There's lots and lots of ways in which Adbusters is highly unconventional. So capitalism is... This might take some time. What is capitalism? Well, capitalism is a society which is based on the idea of profit, on the idea of monetary worth. We live in a capitalist society. It's about private ownership. You work hard at your job, you get your money, you buy your house, you buy your clothes, you buy your stuff, and that's your stuff. That's no one else's stuff. Broadly, that's capitalism, but I've skipped out like a million things there. And critics of ca- uh, capitalism might say, I have to be careful with my words here, but critics of capitalism might say, well, it's not fair. Because under capitalism, certain people have way more than other people. But capitalism encourages people to be greedy. But capitalism encourages people to be possessive, to be materialistic, to hoard stuff. Adbusters is, and there's no way of getting around this, an anti-capitalist magazine. Adbusters wants to challenge capitalism. And it does so in the following ways. It has no anchorage, which means it's hard to read. It's not like Woman Magazine, which is like, come on, buy me. Adbusters is like, I, I, it always seems like this magazine hates you sometimes. The ideology is explicitly anti-capitalist throughout. So even if you don't really quite get what's going on, you still get that this magazine hates capitalism, or rather the producer of this magazine hates capitalism. Adbusters doesn't have a clear brand identity. Now, every edition of Woman Magazine or Games Master Magazine, God, that shut down over 10 years ago, Edge Magazine or What Yacht Magazine or whatever magazine that you pick up in Tesco, well, if you go back the next week or month or whatever, you'll be able to find it again because it's got the same masthead. It's got the same title. It'll be written in the same font. It might be in a slightly different colour or whatever, but, you know, it's going to be in the same place. Adbusters does this weird thing where it has a completely different masthead every issue. It's usually at the top of the magazine, but not always. Sometimes it might be handwritten, sometimes it might be all smashed up, sometimes it might look conventional. It doesn't really matter. It's completely different every time it comes out. Every two months. Which is not a particularly high-frequency magazine in terms of, yeah, its frequency. Adbust is also deliberately upsetting, and it's confrontational. And its mode of address is very, very unpleasant, often. For example, one of the articles in the set edition of Adbusters is titled Save the Planet, Kill Yourself. So essentially, if we read that literally, it's asking the target audience to take their own lives. That's deeply problematic. Very confrontational, very aggressive mode of address. If you pick up Adbusters and maybe you're not familiar with it, or maybe if you are, your first thought might be, wow, this looks rough. This looks like a load of rubbish. It's all scratchy and scribbly and crumbled and splattery and the text is all aligned at odd angles. There's no kind of neat columns in Adbusters. Sometimes there are, but usually even when there's columns of text, they're all slightly wonky, slightly askew, which basically means it has deliberately low production values, which means that the magazine looks very cheap, which is strange because the magazine is actually often very expensive. Now, some people, I mean, like, how much is the magazine? Well, I think one of the official prices given in the UK is £10.99, but that's not actually true. It's pretty much arbitrary how much you'll end up spending on Adbusters. Often it doesn't even have a price or a barcode, or the barcode is hidden It might be on the spine, it might be on the inside cover, it could be in some really, really weird places. Um, And it will change from issue to issue. And every time I've bought Adbusters from the shop, I've been charged a completely different price, sometimes completely random by someone who's just given up and just said, okay, I'm just going to charge you a fiver, which is actually less than half of what it should be. Adbusters is a not-for-profit magazine, which means that it doesn't make money. It makes enough money to cover its costs of manufacture, but it doesn't make any extra money. And if it does, presumably they're putting it into some worthy cause. Um, 
an ad buster doesn't have any adverts. Now, typically, a third of an um, of a magazine's revenue will come from advertising. This might explain why a magazine like Adbusters, which looks quite rough, is actually quite expensive at eleven pounds because it just doesn't have the advertising revenue. It does not have adverts. That's something you absolutely must point out in any exam or any assessment. Adbusters does not have adverts. And it would be pretty hypocritical if it did, given that it's very, very much an anti-capitalist, anti-consumerist magazine. But the final point here, I don't think this is something that's actually referenced enough about Adbusters, is that there is a lack of clear stereotypical representations of gender identity. Now, Adbusters... Is, I mean, I think gender identity is something that's important to Adbusters, but more important is anti-capitalism. So I think perhaps this is something that doesn't get talked about enough, but often the representations of gender in Adbusters are quite surprisingly subversive. For example, in the set edition, there is an image of a naked woman in a bath, and she is not sexualized at all. And that is one of the rarest things in media, to see a non-sexualized image of a naked woman. I mean, we don't even 100% know she is a woman. Like, the, the emphasis, the, the purpose of the image is not for sexual titillation. It's not for sexual gratification of the target audience. The purpose of the image is actually draw attention to draw attention to poverty. It's very, very refreshing, quite frankly to see a representation like that. Let's jump right in. This is the double page spread that we're looking at. And it's really important because, you know, to be frank, I've seen teachers teaching this kind of one page at a time. That's not really how we should do it. This is a double page spread. And these are the two pages. And if we're talking about one of them, we need to talk about the other. Because these two pages are meant to be viewed together. Imagine you're holding the magazine open on the left, we see the logo Louboutin, some feet in bottles, some what looks like, I'm going to make a wild guess here, migrants looking unhappy behind a barbed wire fence and some models' legs. These three, four elements combined make up this double page spread. First things first, this is confusing. This is unconventional. There are very few words on this double page spread. We're not sitting back and reading an article. And yet, this is also not a fashion spread. There's not really any clothes or any fashion or any style to look at. It's very unclear what we actually are supposed to be looking at. And our eyes will flick from left to right. It doesn't follow the Z line rule. Not really. And it doesn't really have a conventional layout. And I think this is very, very important to point out. When we're talking about Adbusters, Adbusters, not Adbusters, Adbusters, this magazine is unconventional. It is breaking the rules. And this spread is breaking the rules. Now let's dig in deep and try and work out what this spread is actually talking about. One of the biggest elements of Adbusters is this idea of détournement. And to détournement, my French is horrible, sorry, but it's French for redirection or to reroute something. So what Adbusters loves to do is it loves to take an image and then by putting it in the magazine, it likes to change its meaning. And another word for this is recontextualization. Détournement and recontextualization. Now, this is from the set edition of Adbusters, but this is not actually technically one of the pages that you need to know about for the, um, what you call it, uh, for the exam, right? We don't need to know about this one, but it's an important one. So this is a Louis Vuitton advert. Louis Vuitton, not to be confused with Louis Vuitton, two completely different luxury brands. And... This is an image of a video game character. This is Lightning from the video game. She's the main character of the video game Final Fantasy XIII. And rather bizarrely, in Japan, she's used, or probably isn't anymore, but has been used fairly recently, is the face of Louis Vuitton, a virtual model. She's a woman who doesn't exist. She is a hero of a fantasy world. And here she is modeling a handbag. 
Now, Adbusters doesn't tell us this information. This is stuff that we're supposed to know. But by having it in Adbusters, presumably we're supposed to really, really consider how ridiculous, how bizarre, how troubling this idea is. But an image of a fake woman is being used to market commercial goods. What's going on here? Well, we're not really being told what to think. And just to kind of point this out, like, yeah, I took this image in, in, in Tokyo in 2016, I think. Um, yeah, it, this is years after the game was released for PlayStation 3, but using lightning from from Final Fantasy XIII to sell Louis Vuitton handbags. It's a bizarre moment. This idea of using this hyper-real representation of women to show this. This is basically assuming that the target audience has quite a lot of cultural capital. Now, cultural capital is your knowledge of culture, is your knowledge of, for example, luxury goods. And I've got to say, I had no idea what... I mean, I had heard of Louis Vuitton. I knew that this is a fashion advert when I saw this. Being a massive nerd, I also knew that this is lightning from Final Fantasy XIII. You've got to know both of these things for this image here to make sense. And likewise, going back to the actual layout we're actually studying, we need to know what Louboutin shoes are for this to make sense. So we see the Louboutin logo. Underneath, we see a very low-quality image of two feet, a black person's feet wearing bottles for shoes on some red sand. So there's no anchorage here, so our brain skims, right? Where is this? It's probably Africa. Where in Africa? It's a huge place. I, I don't know. It's not telling me. Underneath that, Christian Louboutin, red soles are always in season. This is a very, very unconventional layout. But also, it's very unconventional in the sense that we have no anchorage. Why Louboutin? What is Louboutin? I had to ask my wife about this. I had no idea. Okay, I know nothing of luxury shoes, right? Give me a break. Who is this person? Where are they? I don't know. We're just assuming from the colour of their skin, from the bottles, from the colour of the sand, that this is Africa. What is the meaning of red soles are always in season? Well... We combine that with the image and then suddenly it takes on a different meaning. So this is the slogan for the product. And yet now its anchorage means something completely different. It's determined. By being put into this context, it now has a completely different meaning. What Adbusters have done is they've completely changed the meaning. And on the right, we have completely different perspectives. So we also have this on the left image here. So an example of a diametric opposition. We also see this on the right. Now, a diametric opposition is a fancy way of saying binary opposition. And a binary opposition is where two ideological perspectives are in conflict with one another. So, for example, uh, old and young, black and white, tall and short, gay and straight. We often use these in media products to, to, to make meaning, to make sense of the world. In this image, we have a binary opposition between poverty and wealth. We have a binary opposition between fear and calm. We have a binary opposition between shabbiness and high fashion. We have a binary opposition between violence and peace. All these binary oppositions, these two images do not go along with one another. Now, we don't know who these people are on top. However, the anchorage and the repertoire of elements might suggest that they are refugees, that maybe they're fleeing from a war-torn environment. How do I know that? It comes down to intertextuality, because I've seen images like this in the news, in photo stories in newspapers. Who is that woman on the bottom? Well, first of all, I'm guessing she's a woman. It's being a bit stereotypical here. Um, but also, I've seen fashion shows, not in person, on television. So we see a catwalk, a runway model, being opposed to some refugees. Binary oppositions, two things which do not belong with one another. Now, we are left to pick up the pieces. 
seeing these two images, seeing these four images. And if you're confused, good. And I want you to talk about this in the exam. Adbusters is deliberately confusing. Adbusters is deliberately trying to confuse you by combining things which do not belong with each other. Adbusters consistently uses diametrically opposed ideological perspectives to position the audience in an uncomfortable and confusing mode of address. This forces the target audience to, well, what are we even supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do with this information? It's not telling me. I think maybe we need to look at this a bit more carefully. So, determine. This is the Louboutin logo. Louboutin shoes are luxury shoes, extremely expensive, and they have a unique selling point. No other brand can copy this. And they've tried, and they've been sued. Only Louboutin shoes can do this. They have red soles. If we think about that for a second, a shoe having red soles, well, that's a bad idea, isn't it? Because they're just going to get all scuffed up and trashed, and that's the point. These expensive shoes don't last long. They already start being destroyed the second you start wearing them. The second you're wearing them, that's it. Okay. So you've got to be very, very, quite frankly, well off to buy shoes like this in the first place. But also you have to accept that these products are not going to last long before they start to look scruffed and scrappy and damaged and manky. So first of all, we need to actually know this. We need to actually have that knowledge. We need to have that intertextual knowledge. But what the producers of Adbusters have done is they've recontextualized this. Instead of being luxurious, well, then we are forced to anchor this image uh, along with this image. And what we see are deliberately low production values. If Louboutin shoes are luxurious, then this image looks gross. It's really, really low quality. It's really blocky. Maybe it's something you can't see on your screen very well, but looking at this in the magazine, it's, it's low quality. It looks like it's been taken on some ancient phone. Let's also consider the modes of address here. This is a close-up of damaged, chapped feet, which appear to be wearing two water bottles as shoes. And of course, if you go around wearing water bottles as shoes, then your feet are going to bleed, your feet are going to be cut, are going to be damaged. We've gone from a binary opposition of high-end luxury to absolute poverty. Where are we? We are right next to this person's feet. Do we want to be there? No. This is an uncomfortable and challenging mode of address. And adbusters here have forced the target audience to confront extreme poverty. Whose fault is it that this person is poor? Well, we kind of know through the anchorage here. Is it Christian Louboutin? Well, not directly. It's not like this person is, you know, going out and making people in the African subcontinent poor. But perhaps what adbusters are arguing is that in our capitalist society, where the rich are getting richer, the only conclusion to that is the poor must, of course, get poorer. And as we exploit the world and the people around us for our luxurious, luxurious consumer products, well, people have to lose out. And while we spend hundreds and thousands of pounds on shoes that we can only wear a few times, then other people around the world are only going to get poorer and poorer. Let's get back to those questions. Okay. In what ways does Adbusters construct its target audience? Well, the preferred reading here is, I'm angry. I'm angry, but certain people are living in such wealth, while certain people are living in such disgusting poverty. You know what? I'm going to do something about it. Right? That is the preferred reading. We'll talk about an oppositional reading in just a second. How does Adbusters use subversive representations to position its audience? Well, the answer here is uncomfortably. Adbusters positions its audience in an uncomfortable mode of address. Another thing we also need to point out here is the ethnicity of this person. They're black. Black African? I don't know. It's not actually telling us. 
This is not another stereotypical representation. This is not basically saying that everyone in Africa is extremely dirt poor. Well, that's an extremely straightforward representation of people from an entire continent. Is that not particularly problematic or even racist if we take it to its conclusion like that? Also, we have this use of anchorage here. Red souls are always in season. But is this not just conflating this issue with I mean, of course, it's horrible that, you know, certain people have so much and certain people have so little. But is this, you know, are these two things actually explicitly linked? Or are we just participating in some kind of thought experiment? Adbusters makes us feel uncomfortable, but you need to make up your own mind whether Adbusters is effective or not. In terms of actually pointing out these issues in our society. And this lack of an anchorage reinforces this challenging mode of address on the, on the refugee image, on the right side of the double-paid spread. We see these faces gurning, angry, desperate, combined with the mise-en-scene of barbed wire, which once more reinforces this idea of poverty this idea of depression, this idea of fragility. And it's upsetting to see something like this. This is not a fun image. This is not the kind of image that you might want to hang on the wall of your house. Even though it's very artistically taken, very, very evocative, it's still an upsetting and challenging image. And yet it is combined with this second image of a runway model, which depicts high culture i.e. luxury products, but also low production values. And again, we see the image is, is being damaged, almost like water damaged. It's almost like it's been trashed a little bit. It looks a bit gross. It looks a bit nasty. Well, why is that? Is Adbusters making a comment on capitalism itself? Well, there are many, many things that, you know, many conclusions that we can take from this. And a lot of this is going to be completely down to your own perception of how effective Adbusters is. One criticism that we can make of Adbusters is that potentially this magazine is hypocritical. It preaches against capitalism and consumerism, yet it is a consumer product, which is very aesthetically pleasing. And we might argue that, okay, it's got no brand identity, but it kind of does. It kind of sells this trashy, edgy brand identity to its target audience. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but, you know, we could potentially argue that Adbusters is hypocritical. But ultimately, if we're going to make only two, two conclusions from this, again, let's skip back to these questions. Adbusters is constructing its target audience in a deliberately confrontational way almost angry through this double-paid spread. And Adbusters also uses subversive representations to position its audiences in an uncomfortable mode of address. <laughs>